Hi everyone, my name is Moni. And I'm Naveen. And today we are going to be showing you how to play a game called Oceans. Yeah, this game is published by North Star Game Studio. Uh, it's the same people that brought us Evolution. It's a very popular game. Mm -hmm. uh, this plays two to four players. There is an expansion for five or six. Um, and it's really, really highly anticipated. Yeah. So this is, it's kind of like in the same line as Evolution, but this mm -hmm. is its own standalone game. All right. set within the ocean, right? So this is a tutorial video only. If you're interested in watching our playthrough and review, go ahead and please click on that link up there and we will see you there. Otherwise, if you could please turn on your Klingon subtitles just in case we make any rules mistakes, that would be awesome. And if you enjoy content like this and would like to see more, please consider subscribing. And without further ado, we are going to jump in to this rules teach. So if you can go ahead and direct your attention over here, we have our component spread. As you can see here, we have fish, we have oceans, we have different levels of oceans. Yep. So in this game, there are four different levels. There's the reef, which is this beautiful, colorful area here. And then we have the three different ocean zones. This is the first zone, second, and third ocean zone. And we have about 100 fish that are kind of distributed amongst all four areas. Right. Um, and that's in a two-player game. If you're playing with more than two players, then you're going to add uh, more fish of different colors. And they're all just population. Yeah, the distribution will be a little different. Yeah, correct. In the middle here, we also have our species boards, which we're going to be using a lot of during the game. We have our deck of surface cards here, which is the main card deck of the game. And we also have the deep. Now, this is the deep, and it's an optional var variant, mm -hmm. but we decided to include it in this rules teach because I know that a lot of people are going to want to play with it. So at least you'll know how it works. Right. We also each have our own player screens, which we're going to be hiding population behind. And population in this game is points. Um, and we also have these starting bonus tokens, which are going to help balance or account for player turn order. Yep. The way that this game works is throughout the game, we're going to be evolving various species using these surface cards or traits. And the traits kind of give our species um, different kinds of like personalities. It dictates the way our species behaves. We're going to be foraging, uh, we're going to be feeding on fish, and once the whole board has run out of fish completely, the game will end. And the winner is going to be whoever has the most points or the most of these fish behind their player screens and on their species boards. Mm -hmm. That's going to determine the winner. Right. So the way that the game works is each player is going to start the game with six of these surface cards in their hand. And now these surface cards, they're basically a combination of 12 different trait cards. There are 12 trait cards with 10 copies of each trait card, yep. and that's the entire deck. They're just 12 different types of traits. Right. And the traits do different things. So the way that a turn works is the very first thing that, that a player is going to do on their turn is you play a card from your hand. And this is assuming we're at the, the start of the game, because as the game progresses, things will change, right. which, we'll which we'll discuss. Yes. So you're going to play a card from your hand, and you're going to use it to do one of two things. You're either going to evolve a species, or you're going to use it to migrate. A majority of the time, you're going to be using it to evolve a species, so we're going to start there. Um, you can either evolve a species that you already have in front of you, or you can start a new one. Yeah. So at the beginning of the game, not, nobody has anything in front of them, so we're going to be starting a new one. The way that that works is you play the card from your hand, and you grab a new species card here, and you're going to put it in front of you. And then the trait card will go on this dark blue side of the board. Now in future rounds, when you decide to evolve new species again, these species cards can go on either side of an already existing one, or if I already have two of them here, it could even go in between. Yeah, you can sandwich it. You can sandwich it because the order uh, it matters in terms of attacking each other and feeding off each other, etc. And so this species is, if Naveen has a species here, this species is considered to the right of this one. And this species is considered to the right of this one. Correct. So it kind of goes full circle yeah. like this. So the most, whole table will be Most a ideal would be us in a circular pattern. Correct. But for this demonstration, my far end is connected to her far end. Correct. It would go in a circle, technically. Yes. And now, like I said earlier, if you don't want to evolve a new species, you can evolve an already existing one. So in a future turn, if I wanted to... Uh, play a new trait card on this species, I can. And you can play the same the same uh, trait cards. One species can have two of the same trait cards, but each species has a maximum of three. Mm -hmm. You cannot go more than here. More than three. More than that. Yeah. yeah. If you want to add a new trait card here, and maybe you want to replace one, you may. You may discard pre-existing trait cards and put a new one in its place. That's fine. But maximum three. 
Now you'll notice all each of these cards have different symbols and they all have sort of text uh, that kind of determine or tell you what they do. Um, and that all has to do with the next phase, which is the feeding phase. After you play one card down, you're going to feed. Now, if you have several species in front of you, let's just play all of these out. Now I have two of them here. You only feed one species per turn. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna choose one of these to feed. And when you feed, you're either going to forage or you're going to attack. So everything that has like this green circular symbol is meant for foraging. So if I were to choose this species to feed, I can say I'm going to forage and foraging is always foraging from the reef. Because if you notice, the green circle is is also shown on the reef. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's, from the top down, you can't really see it. But these uh, green circles on all four sides. There's a circle here. So if there are no population in the reef, then you cannot forage there. And when you forage, by the way, you basically take the two fish that it says, and you put it here on your species board. Um, the other thing that you can do instead of foraging is you can attack. Now, you may choose a species of an opponent's, or you can choose your own to attack. But basically, you just choose one species on the table to attack, and you attack for that many. So if I'm going to attack, say this, let's just say I'm going to be nice, I'm going to attack myself. Mm -hmm. And say I am going to, using this species, I'm going to attack this one for two. I just, I literally just pull two off up here, and I bring them to my board. However, if you notice, there's another symbol on the cards, which is this kind of like yellowish shell. This is a defensive symbol. And this does not prevent attack. This decreases the amount of fish that the opponent is, or the player is going to be taking from your species. So because my attack power was only two, this is defending for four, so mm -hmm. I actually don't take any fish. Right. Yeah. So basically it says whenever somebody attacks you, you they take four fish less. Now any cards that don't have this red or green, or any species, I guess, that doesn't have a card that has a red or green symbol, they have an innate ability of one. one. So at least one forage and one attack Ta power. Yep. So that's kind of something that you want to try to remember. There are also some cards that ban you from doing those said things. So like this symbol right here, it's like a green with a slash mark. That says you are not allowed to forage. And this red symbol right here says you're not allowed to attack. Mm -hmm. So if you have a species that has that symbol on it, Regardless of whether or not you have another card that allows you to forage, this species is not allowed to forage. Yeah, it overrules. It overrules. Yep. So this is not a good play because now this species is not allowed to forage or attack. Right. So maybe try not to do that. Yeah. Um, just another note about the species board. Whenever you take population, you're going to be filling your board. And as you can see, there is space for 10. 10 population. This last spot here, that's kind of like the, the fish bones, you're not allowed to actually put a fish on there unless all the other spots are filled. Because if you have to put a fish on that last fish bone, that's actually a very bad thing. Mm -hmm. So say we have all these fish here and we need to go and fill another fish on that fish bone space because whenever you forage or attack, you must take that full amount if you can. Right. This causes your species to overpopulate, making you lose half of your population. So you must go down to five. All that work to overpopulate. Now the last type of symbol that you're gonna see on these cards is this blue kind of triangular symbol. And this has to do with gains. Now gaining allows you to uh, gain population from the ocean whenever something occurs. So this specific card says you gain two after the species to the left is attacked. Mm. So if anybody were to attack this species, including myself, this card or this species would gain two population from the ocean. And you always start with the first zone. Once the first zone is completely depleted, then you move to the second zone and then the third. So I would get two of these to go on my board. If you'd notice, there are only a certain amount of population in the reef for foraging. So if ever this area were to run out, then you can't forage. Mm -hmm. And so the way that you can kind of go around that is when, you're, when you go to play a card during the first part of your turn, Instead of using the card to evolve a new species or evolve an exist existing one, you can use the card to migrate. So say I have these cards in my hand and uh, I, I play a card from my hand. And let's just play this card here. If you notice at the bottom left hand corner, there's a number that is the migration value. So basically you must choose a zone, take that many of the fish and move it into another zone. Right. So I can take seven, uh, you know, fish from the first ocean zone and move them back into the reef. So now we can start foraging again. Exactly. So that is the other thing that you can do with these cards on your turn.
So just to rewind, first thing that you do is you play a card, then you feed with one species only, then after that, we move into aging. So each turn, all of your species are going to age, not just one. Right. And so what aging does is you take one species, or sorry, one population from each species and you put it behind your player screen. And now that is just points, points. straight yeah. points at the end of the game. If you don't have any population on your species and it comes time to age, then this species goes extinct. That's the only time that you're gonna lose a species. If it gets to the part where you need to age and you cannot age the full amount. So then it would just go away. So with that being said, if it's somebody else's turn and they go to attack you and you don't have any population on that species, you don't lose it. Right. It's literally only if when you go to age and you cannot, cannot age the full amount, yeah. the species goes extinct. Right. And then all the trait cards also get discarded. Now, after you're done aging, you go into the last part of your turn, which is just drawing cards. So the first thing that you can do is you can choose to draw one of these deep cards. Now, if you're not playing with a deep you know, card, then you'd skip then this and you would yeah. basically, you, you're allowed to discard any number of the cards from your hand and draw back up to six and then you would end your turn. Right. But if you are playing with the deep cards, you can choose to either draw one of the ones face up into your hand or you can draw three from the top of the deck and you can choose to keep one and you would discard the other two on top on of top. each. Yep. Yeah, because they're they are their own uh, discard decks basically and so the deep cards are just like the trait cards except they're a lot better i would say they're pretty some of them are pretty strong and they are all unique so yes. you're not going to see a trait card that's repeated i believe there are 89 of these and you can kind of mix and match or you can decide which ones to use in your game and which ones to not use which i think is, really, is pretty cool yeah. but so the thing with the deep cards is once you draw them into your hand you cannot discard them Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the end of your turn, when you go to discard cards to draw back up to six, you cannot discard right. deep cards. They're deep cards six. must be played if you want to get rid of them. Right. Which brings me to my next point. Once this whole first ocean zone is completely depleted of population, we have the Cambrian Explosion. And there's a card in there to remind you of that. Now, starting at that point, on your turn, you may play two cards. Two cards. So if you're playing with a deep expansion, you can play a deep card starting from the Cambrian Explosion onwards. Right. You also age for two instead of one, which makes you know species going extinct a little bit more, more possible. More yeah. possible. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And lastly, we have these scenario cards. Now, we just have the starting scenario cards for the Reef variant that are out, but the game comes with a bunch of these, and you can kind of choose which ones to use for your game, depending on what kind of personality you want your game to be like. So there are actually two different types of scenario cards. There are these blue ones, and then there are the ones that are kind of purple here. And so the difference is that these are immediate, like one-time effect kind of things, and the blue cards are an ongoing effect. And these trigger whenever their ocean zone is fully depleted. So that can happen multiple times during the game. So if we migrate fish back into this ocean zone and then deplete it again, it'll keep on triggering. Does that make sense? So that's kind of how those work. Unlike these, the Cambrian explosion occurs when the ocean zone is depleted. One time. But it only happens once and then after that you remove the card to kind of show that this is ongoing until the end of the game this cannot get undone yeah whether you it's migrate happened. into to surface one or you don't it if it happened once it stays it that stays way. in effect and as, as a reminder after the cambrian explosion players are going to be playing two cards per turn instead of one if you're playing with the deep this is now the chance to, to start playing those deep cards, cards yeah. um, and then when you age you're going to age for two population instead of one and so the last thing I wanted to discuss are these deep cards. So there are 89 of these deep cards in the deck and they're all unique and they're kind of like they're, they're trait cards, but they're really powerful. And so the thing that's, that's interesting about them is when you play them, they cost. So they're great, they're in your hand, but they're, they, they cost points. When you play them from your hand, you have to pay the amount of population from behind your screen equal to whatever the migration number is at the bottom left-hand corner. So you're spending points in order to play these, but they're, they usually have, you know, pretty good effects. Good benefits, yeah. So the game kind of continues this way until all three ocean zones are completely depleted. Once that happens, then we have this bag of reserve population that we're going to pour into this third zone just for fulfilling um, gains and like allowing people to, to get their full turns worth of right. population. And then the game will end at the end of that round. And after that, it's you count all the population you have behind your screen, including the population you have on your existing species boards, and they're all one point each. You add that to whatever your bonus token was, and that is your score. Whoever has the most points wins. Yep, that's it. And that's pretty much how you play the whole game.
So if you have any questions on how the game is played or how to teach the game, maybe, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in watching our playthrough and review, we've included a link in the description. And if you like content like this and would like to see more, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.